All right. Let's see here. Well, All right. we go and oh, there we are. We are live on Facebook. You're still not here. Yep. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Well, we are live on Facebook. Uh, my name is Daniel Crozier, uh, your unfortunate host. I'm so sorry to everybody. <laughs> uh, this is uh, called uh, Talking Palettes, and I am joined with uh, the remarkable talents of Jorge Corona and Morgan Beam. How are you guys doing? Hey, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great to you know, be able to talk to, to more, uh, human beings. Um, you know, I know you guys are, uh, pretty, uh, pretty tied up, um, uh, you know, in quarantine, just like everybody else. Yep. Yeah. It has, it's been what, four weeks, five weeks. I don't even, I lost count. What it, yeah. What it yeah. is anymore. I don't know. Um, but yeah. yeah, it really makes you super grateful for yeah modern technology and the <laughs> use of, uh, cameras and the internet. <laughs> oh yep. yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, you know, a little while ago, uh, you know, Jorge was, was mentioning that, uh, you guys, we you know, were working on, uh, uh, getting a bunch of projects, you know, tied up so you could go on a trip to, to Italy, I think. Yep. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We were supposed to be in Italy, uh, the end of March and the beginning of April for yeah. our honeymoon, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a for, a for a very delayed honeymoon. <laughs> so we were very excited to finally get it. Um, and, and but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> although we are thankful to not be stuck there. Yeah. Sorry, Charlie. We love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, oh, uh, yeah, usually uh, what I ask, uh, you know, right out of the bag is, is, you know, who are you guys? Where do you come from? And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a big loaded question. You know, how'd you get into this uh, creative route of uh, making comic books? Want to go first? Sure, my story is less interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm actually, we're, we're uh, holed up here in Denver right now, and that's originally where I'm from. Um, I did kind of move around a bunch before we ended up back here. Uh, but just kind of your normal, I feel like, creative person story. I always loved comics, kind of always wanted to make comics. Um for a living, even as a kid. Uh, it's not something I originally went to university for. Mm -hmm. uh, my undergrad was not art related. Uh, but I graduated in 2010 in San Francisco during our last recession. Oh. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> um, and had to do some, some real good soul searching about, like, you need to figure out a career. Because my undergrad was in cultural anthropology. Um, well, not a lot, of, a lot of jobs happening in that one right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, and I, you know, just kind of took a year to sit and think, and I decided that the only thing I could think of that I ever completely and was sure I wanted to do was comics, so I had no idea how to do that on my own, mm -hmm. uh, so I decided to go back to school, um, and I actually went to SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design, oh, cool. uh, in their master's program for sequential art, which is a fancy term for comics, comics. and storyboarding, mostly. <laughs> nice. That's That's wonderful. Yeah. That's yeah. That's where. That's where we met. Yeah, that's where we met. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we met actually the most of. So here in Denver, we're actually part of a comic studio called Jam House. Um, it's got six pro comic members who all work there. Um, and we're all from Scott. Yeah, we're all from Scott. <laughs> we came together there. So, but yeah, they're from all over, all yeah. over the states too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm the international one. So I'm from Venezuela, and <laughs> and uh. And yeah, no, I, I love to draw ever since I was a kid. And since, yeah, very, very early on, I got into like, I loved animation. I love animated movies, animated shows, stuff like that. Cool. And it wasn't until a family trip that I discovered comics. Like the, I was, I was, uh, I was more familiar with like the comic strips in the back of the newspapers. That, oh, nice. that was like, you know, like the Phantom and stuff like that. And that was always like my favorite stuff. But then on a family trip, I can't remember if it was to Miami or somewhere else, mm -hmm. uh, I found – it was back when you still had comic books at the grocery store, and I found those, and I was, like, obsessed with the Batman animated show by that point, and I saw, like, Batman comics that look oh, completely cool. different to what I was – yeah, I think it was Kelly Jones or something like that. So I was oh, like, nice. 
Exactly. And I was like in love with comics ever since. So that's kind of like the love affair with comics started. And um, I went to uh, back home in, in Venezuela. I went to college for graphic design, which was kind of like the closest I could get to do illustrations or more be, you know, be more in the creative field. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that was one of the, uh, the careers that, uh, uh, that were uh, offered back home. So I worked as a graphic designer, but that got me into a bunch of different stuff. I got to work as, a, as an art director for a production uh, company. Oh, cool. I did, uh, yeah, no, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I did, you know, just some regular uh, graphic design for different companies. I worked for a social media advertising company doing graphic design. And then by the very end, um, I started just working more as an illustrator because I found enough clients that I was doing mostly just illustration for different stuff for Brandon and, you know, restaurants and stuff like that. And it was then that I got a scholarship to come to the States. And one of my main things I wanted to do was either go into animation or, uh, or, uh, special arts. And, and I got my, uh, I got the chance to go to special arts and that's kind of like how the, whole career in comics started after that, after graduated. Nice. I was a Fulbright scholar. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. So, yeah, you you guys have already, yeah, seem to have a, a lot of careers already and, and um, you, know, you know, working in the arts and doing all this uh, fantastic stuff. Um, what, uh, what, you know, for the both of you, what was uh, the first, uh, you know, comic book project that uh, you each worked on? Like, for money? <laughs> uh, well, let's you know, uh, let, let's start with that with, uh, for money, and then you know what was like the the first non professional gig, I suppose. Mine was a Justice League uh, Beyond uh, short story, like three. Yeah, um, Harry really took off. Weird. Three so issues, cool. um, and yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was my first one. Professional. I'm talking about your first first comic, the fourth kid. Oh, you mean the web comic? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, no, so, and I think that was the reason why I got, actually, the scholarship to go to, to SCAD. It was pretty cool. It was, I had, a, along with a friend back home, we did, like, a webcomic called Manwood, which, you know, <laughs> in retrospect, it's a, it's a, it's an awful name, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it was a parody of, like, a superhero thing, and we just did it for a short amount of time, but it got, it picked up track. Uh, it, was back about, home. it was about a man who was bitten by a radioactive splinter. Yes, and so he is half. Yes, he is half wood. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> he had like a like uh, a drawers coming out of his chest because he was he worked. Yeah, it was susceptible to moss. Oh god, yes. Oh no, yeah. He's um, Dutch elm uh, disease. Yeah, he's yeah. His arch nemesis was the was the Komehentek, which was basically translates to like the. People eater, but he was like a like a what do you call it? Like a termite. Like a termite, but he was also bitten by a radioactive iPod or something like that. <laughs> so that's the tech part at the end of the movie. <laughs> so his body was a was an iPod that kept playing like weird boleros and romantic songs from like satellite America while he was just like waving a bunch of like ear pod ear pods, arms. And oh stuff. my god, just, that's fun. Um, it was dumb, but it was a lot of fun to do, and that was kind of like the first time that I, I actually got to yeah work as a, a you know work at a comic because I've worked for uh, doing illustrations before, but that was the first time that I actually applied it to more sequential. Uh, even though yeah, before I, I did a couple of uh, storyboards by that point or something like that, but I had never done a comic, and that was what 2010, 2011. So it wasn't it wasn't yeah, before that. Yeah, so it had to be yeah. like ten or nine. So yeah, it, I've been doing this for maybe ten years. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I don't know. Before school, I drew comics all the time, but they were just kind of like for me, I guess. I definitely mm -hmm. never put them on the internet or did anything with them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the first real like finished work I started to do was for a lot of Kickstarter anthologies. Okay. Because um, also I feel like I owe a lot of my start to a lot of those projects um, just because it, it kind of helped me circulate stuff out there. Um, we did a couple in school, definitely. Yeah. Um, there's one of our fellow SCAD guys and also 
pro comic artist and now professor. Uh, his name's Nikki. So yeah. Oh um, yeah, I know Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. yeah, you guys introduced me to Nikki. Yeah. yeah, Nikki's great, but he also has like one of the sharpest business minds yeah. in the game. So he turned us on to Kickstarter like right at the beginning. So like in 2010, I kind of feel like when comics was just starting to kind of get a go on there and he was like, this yeah. is going to be a strong platform. Like yeah. this is going to do whatever. So um, that was pretty cool. And I feel like that's, you know, they were just short stories, mostly around like 10 pages, but I feel like those are the first times that I like completely like finished, cleaned up and then like printed a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was a pretty big deal. Um, you know, and, and then from there, probably the next biggest one was another Kickstarter anthology called Valor. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I remember that one. Yeah, it's put on by uh, the folks who do the uh, Namesake webcomic, which has, is a great comic, and it has a pretty large following. So that one, you know, I was kind of fresh out of school, and I participated in. And it was, like, the first time they were kind of just doing it for fun, so we all mm -hmm. participated just kind of for fun, and then it got, like, really big. It, it got funded pretty healthily, so I feel like that was, like, my first probably, like, paying comic work. Nice. Uh, and then my first, like... Pro with a publisher. Was it Emily? I think it was the family. Drive. I was trying to think about a, a short for Boom before that, but I think that came after. I think that came after. I think, yeah. But yeah, the first work I did was uh, the family trade for Image with uh, Justin Jordan and Nikki Ryan. Oh, cool. Oh well, actually, technically, I take that back. The technically, the first ever like published by a publisher work I had was the four page short I did with oh, Lonnie. Right. Um, in the oh, back okay. Shutter. That was actually my That's first true. one. That was the first one. And yeah. that was all thanks to Lonnie for, for giving me that kick. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, hey, uh, for anybody out there uh, that's watching, feel free to hit us up uh, in the comment section with uh, uh, questions or anything like that. Um, I think right now we've got uh, Brett Smith <laughs> watching us. Uh, <laughs> hi, Brett. <laughs> hey, Brett. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, the... When I first saw your work, uh, Morgan, you know, years ago, you, you know, before I uh, I was introduced to, to Jorge's work, yeah, you know, your your use of uh, you know line work, but especially the, the the coloring, the watercolors, oh my god, they are so vibrant. Um, so instantaneously, I, I fell in love with with that, and then you know, you know, Jorge, uh, I think Charlie and um, Sean Benner introduced me oh, to yeah. to your work it is you know fantastic gestural you know ink work and, and stuff in, in uh, a lot of your books especially your black and white stuff that I've seen Thank you. Um, Thank especially you. recently online um, do you guys ever you know since you're a married couple do you also ever find yourself uh, like collaborating on a project or is it one of those things where you're like Fuck you. Go to your room. I'll do my thing. I'll, I'll do. No, we can never escape. There's no. There's no other room. There's yeah. just one room. <laughs> True, especially now, right? And we work in the same studio, so even before this. Yeah, so even before this. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think it's kind of a mix of the two. We definitely um, do a lot of collaborations together, yeah. um, which has been fun in the past. But I think it's also really important for us to maintain our own voices and still have our own yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. You know, I. I as a, as a couple who's both in comics, I feel like we get all the time, especially at conventions or whatever, where it's like, oh, is this your book together? Like, yeah. oh, are you a writer artist team? Oh, are you a whatever? And it's like, no, we just both happen to work in the same industry. Yeah, we, we pick and choose the, the projects that we do yeah. end up working together. Uh, for the most part, we, we both work in our own books. But, like, yeah, we've had times that I either ink on Morgan, Morgan colors on my stuff. Yeah, um, we did. Um, I the colored, first one I think was Goners. Yeah, I colored a dream sequence in Goners, so that way yeah, it nice. could kind of have a different visual style. Yeah. Aside from that, I feel like it's been mostly a lot of we collaborate. I feel like mainly on kind of non-comic work. Yeah. When so we like a lot of like posters. We did like a large mural installation for San Diego Comic Con this past year. Oh, sweet. Some other kind of like illustration client stuff. Yeah. Um, things that I don't know. I, I think we just. Usually we, we both feel so strongly about our comics and we both generally have, we're pretty stubborn both of us <laughs> and have a lot, we're a little opinionated. Yeah. Uh, and so it's easier to collaborate for things I feel like that, not that we're not invested in, but that we have a little bit more freedom and open-ended. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm, okay. Uh, and we have more time to experiment because yeah, that's, that's most of what we take it into is just like experimenting and working together in different projects that yeah. it's not what we tend to do on a daily basis working on comic pages and stuff like that. Yeah, so. but we're we're working on a couple more a couple other things, I think, especially with all this time yeah. right now, yeah. you know, 
things about the future of comics and different things. We definitely have some some ideas, I think, for some other collaborative projects down the road. But yeah. Um, so yes and no, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, and, and you bring up a, another point too. Uh, you know, the, the current state of of everything, the the, the flux yeah. that. Like everybody from from like uh, where you're at in in your career uh, as a you know artists and creators to you know other production guys to the publishers to the distributors to the shops, I mean everything is is kind of up uh, up in the air. You know what yeah. what do you uh, what would your take be on that? Well, I don't know. It's it's almost hard to have a take just because like mm -hmm. just like nobody knows you know i right. just like the rest of us you know scroll through comics twitter all the time and and read everybody's kind of views and and mostly i don't know a lot of them seem like very sort of doom and gloom and disheartening and like the industry is dead and everything yeah. and i don't really think that like there's gonna be some growing pains obviously like it's it's gonna be hard i think for everybody's industry yeah, for a right. little while because the wheels have to kind of start going and the engine's got to get full up to full steam again and that's sort of just an unfortunate reality but yeah comics as a medium won't die yeah um, i think there's probably going to be some structural changes yeah, some restructuring that, will that, happen, that will happen but i think that that may be needed to happen anyways mm -hmm. and without unfortunately a sort of drastic push like this i don't think it was going to happen because I think as an industry, you know, comics had gotten really comfortable with the way things were going, mm -hmm. which is fine, but it, it didn't have a lot of growth Expansion. happening. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm hoping that now after this, you know, great minds can kind of come together, you know, business minds who are not us, yeah. not business, but, you know, and kind of think like, okay, we've had this major stall out and whatever, um, but how can we, you know, what can we do? how can we use this opportunity to kind of change and maybe do better to it? So instead of just going back to how it was, yeah. how can we now expand and grow and make the industry, you know, bigger rather than just kind of coasting it neutral, which I feel like it, it was a little bit. Yeah. No, and I feel like it is exposed to also a lot of like how fragile everything was. Like mm -hmm. everything was just like standing on chopsticks and it's like, yeah. Oh, you knock one down and everything kind of like, fell through. I think, yeah. We had a good, yeah. good look at how not solid of a base it was. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hoping yeah. that that, very While it's so. hard to learn the hard way, we yeah, give us an opportunity sure. to now build a solid base yeah. to build everything up so that way it can do better. Yeah, it'd be more resistance. Oh. Just, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, looks like uh, Brett uh, sent us some questions, and Brian Bonner just joined us. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Um, Hi, Brett. Brett's asking, how did you both uh, clo close? I think he meant choose such so. big projects uh, for Image, the Family Trade, and uh, Middle West. Um, so I'm not sure we chose them. I think they kind of chose us. Um, mostly I think that's through kind of writer, well, at least for mine, even I won't talk for you, but um, I, we got to be pretty good friends uh, with Justin Jordan, kind of oh, while yeah. we were finishing up school or at the end of school. Yeah. Um, for anybody who's met Justin, he's just like the nicest guy. Yeah. He can be a little shy at first, but he just like loves people mm -hmm. and loves stories and he's just like very open and welcoming. So it was nice to, you know, have a kind of professional creator. And we met him because Trad Moore, who does uh, Luther Strode, yeah. also went to SCAD. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> the yeah. SCAD work is vast. Yeah. Um, Trad's also a super nice guy. So it was just nice to, you know, kind of start talking to him. And then, you know, he kind of made a joke once that, like, once you get to know or work with, like, one person from SCAD, you just sort of, like, go around the circle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've all done uh, various pitches for Justin, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Yours never went anywhere. Yeah, really I'm, the, I'm the one that, like, did a pitch with, George, with Justin and never went anywhere. Justin so. and Jorge <laughs> did a pitch, and they pitched it at Image, and Image was like, nah. Nah. And at the wow. same time, I got picked up for Gunners, which was also through image. image. And then Justin was also obviously doing stuff for Image. And we were like, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> um, <laughs> there Just, yeah, I guess that one didn't work. But, but yeah. yeah, so Justin, you know, I for years I'd kind of been uh, dogging him, being like, where's my story? I want to work with you, you know, whatever. Because I, I just think that Justin's books are just, like, really fun. Yeah. I think he's a great writer of characters, and I was just like, this will be great to work on. So finally, nice. um, he and his best friend, Nikki Ryan, had come up with this kind of fantasy story that was a little different from some of the other things he did. And he was like, you know, I think, like, now's your time. You know, yeah. every time he puts those open calls online, sometimes it's like, name an artist you think would be good for this book, and he describes it. And every time I'd come in his comments and be like, me. <laughs> <laughs> So you know how to stalk him pretty well, and it, you know I punches have buttons. A lot of shame yeah, yeah. When it comes to business things and asking for what I want, which has actually <laughs> helped me greatly. But, Good. Uh, maybe not a great personal trait. <laughs> um, 
Well, and, and as a creator, you really have to be relatively aggressive. So many oh, yeah. of us, yeah, myself included, when it comes to the business end, I'm very introverted. I'm very shy. Yeah. I don't want to have to deal with that. Are. We're all very humble, you know, and because it feels, it feels, um, you know, kind of almost like narcissistic or braggy to advocate for yourself, right? Which, like, I get. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, you just have to think about it less as like you, the artist, and more like you, the established business. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm lucky that I have. I kind of come from a family of like entrepreneur -y people. Oh, so my cool. mom ran her own business for a long time, and that was like one of the first lessons when I had graduated was trying to start freelance. She told me she was just like, "Don't." Be afraid to ask. She's like, the worst is that people say is no. Yeah. Like, if, if a job solicits you and they're not paying what you want, ask for more money. If you want a job, ask for it. They, like, yeah. that advice has really helped me. <laughs> nice, nice. That's great. That's great. Um, it looks like uh, Brett's got a follow up. Um, so he's he's asking, is uh, is uh, image uh, creator owned as a as a claim? So you own all the rights. Yes. Your work. Yeah. Okay. Image is exclusively a creator owned. Yeah. publisher and what's interesting about image which i feel like a lot of people don't know is that like they are super hands-off yeah um which is oh. pretty cool if you just want to have a creator own like you don't you don't work with an editor at image no you don't work, you just yeah. send them an idea and they like literally just like print it yeah okay it. okay so, um, so like you on the bright side of that it's kind of cool because you get to you know if you had an idea that's the idea it's going to be like it's you know you're you yeah. have it's it falls you, on you yeah, yeah you own all mm -hmm. the rights you own all the ideas you're going to make it exactly as you want which is really cool the downside is right editors do a lot of good things a they help your story be better yeah, yeah. um so if you don't have a lot of eyes on it or some things you can run into some potholes um and you are responsible entirely for keeping yourself on track schedule wise and also generally for most of your like marketing and solicitation and stuff yeah okay um, so, so yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's a give, it's a give and take, um, yeah. but it's definitely not kind of the the structured environment I think you get with some of, you know if you worked with like Boom even on a creator your own project or certain other yeah more involvement with the with the production part or yeah. the pre production part I guess it's um, yours to lose essentially yeah 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 and like with yeah yeah like it depends every every company works differently in the mm -hmm. terms of like what are the deals that they offered and what are the you know the uh, the benefits and the down sides of, of each of, and every one of them uh and i feel like when you're deciding where to take your property or your book or your idea or whatever mm -hmm. it's a good it's it's good to do the research into how those companies work because yeah like not everyone is the same and yeah and and, and then you do get benefits but like you know it's a, it's a waiting game into like oh, okay so this this is working for me and this is what i need when you know for someone else it might be completely the opposite yeah. if you want to and that that comes usually to the uh to the point where you know how much of the rights you want to own and how right. much of the risk you want to take on how your much own. structure you need yeah exactly mm -hmm. so so uh companies work differently uh obviously you know and that's not even taking into account working for hire or working you know as a as a creator um bringing it bringing a whole new property to the to a publisher but so yeah. You're you're still working towards the deadline, right? You have a set deadline or, or is it your own timetable that you set up? Yeah, you, you do, but if you blow it, you don't have anybody like it's just hard because like if you blow your deadline for image or whatever, you've just blown it. Nobody's checking in on you, nobody's right. making sure you're, you're I mean they're yeah, they're checking it. yeah, they're checking in in the, in the sense of like, you know, this is the debt this is the dates that we need the files for. Okay. But you don't have anyone necessarily going compared to a uh, you know, other other publishers that you work more directly with an editor, where they're like, "Oh, by this date we need the, we need the pencils. By this date we need the the inks." By this date we need to send it to the colorist. You yeah, know, exactly. Which yeah. is kind of all like you you. Oh, okay. So you have yeah. to be your own project manager. Yeah. Yeah. For example, like uh, with Middle West, uh, because the the project was big enough and was affordable enough that we hired actually uh, an editor. But that was on our end, so we mm -hmm. had an editor who could uh, basically keep us on track yeah. and and be be a project manager that would in, um, you know be that middle person between us and Image, so he could be the one in charge of figuring out when we needed the files, nice. when we needed to send them. So he was organizing everything. Oh, nice! But that, was, but that came from our end, from the yeah. creative team. It wasn't something like mm -hmm. Image before. Like for example, and then we worked with DC or we work with uh, boom or whatever. And then they come with their editor and the editor is the one that is like, Hey, we need this. Sets up this. the deadlines, checks in on you, yeah. you know, kind of your forefront of communications. Yeah. Changes things that last minute. 
Not necessarily. No? Okay. <laughs> well, it depends. It depends because yeah. it's like, yeah, it depends on projects and it also depends on how involved you also are in the process. If you send like a final, a finished page at the end, they're going to be like, oh, this needed a couple of changes. But so, if you, mm. you had send process, it's like, yeah. oh, it could have picked Generally, up. Generally, you send like thumbnails first and then pencils and then inks and yeah. whatever. And so there's kind of like tweaks as you go. But okay. I would say that generally, unless it's been something huge or like sometimes, right, especially if you do work for hire on like um, the properties, so like Adventure Time yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes there's things a lot trickle of things, in from, yeah. from up top, you know, from like Fox or, or whatever. Oh, sure. That, that they need to be involved. No, yeah. and that I feel like is generally when I've had big changes to like final things. Yeah. Um, the only other, I just feel like if your editor's, if you have a good editor, they don't generally screw you at the end. Yeah. Okay, like that. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but again, you see everything. Yeah, you see everything. Yeah. Like, like, just like whole, in every field. On the like, whole, as long as your editor, you know, and most editors we've worked with have been really good, um, is is good and is being, you know, kind of on top of it and looking at the process you're sending. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then usually by the time you get to the finished one, you know, you're all on the same page and it's good yeah. to go. Um, which is especially important for me because, again, working with watercolor. And I, I yeah. do introduce this to my clients when we get to that final step. I'm like, listen, hmm. at this stage now, you kind of just need to trust me and right. I can do digital real quick mock-ups of colors. If you're not sure or if you want something else. And I'm mm. like, but once it's done, it's, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> it's permanent. Like, yeah. I there's, there's, you, I cannot change it. <laughs> yeah. There's no magic eraser for watercolor. Yeah. yeah. And so generally yeah. as long as I set up that expectation ahead of time, it's been fine. Yeah. Um, there was definitely a couple times kind of early on. I know when I didn't set that up that I'd send final files and they'd be like, Oh, can we see it more like this? Or can you tweak that? And I'd have to be like, <laughs> well, <Two> no. <laughs> not really. Um, so yeah, but again, because generally, you know, I'm walking through each of these steps and kind of communicating, um, yeah. it's usually not too bad at the end. Yeah, that's man, that's cool. Um, so uh, a little bit, uh, you know, kind of backtracking to when you know you guys were uh, growing up and everything. What was you know like the the earliest you know comic book that uh, you recall? reading that really captured uh, your imagination sailor moon yeah i was gonna say sailor something. moon nice yeah nice. Sailor Moon's kind of what got me into comics as a kid oh I mean, wow when i was like really young i i was watching you know the the show on like i don't know kids wb i think oh cool um whatever it was on at like 6 a.m and i was obsessed with it and so i figured out that they had these like kind of like light novels um where it was just like novel adaptations of the tv show okay that I figured out I could read and then not have to wait for the episode every week. And then I went to the bookstore looking for the next novel, which wasn't out yet, but the lady wasn't sure what I was looking for. And she was like, Oh no, that says that like it's upstairs. And I went upstairs and it was all the comics. And then I was like, nice. forever changed. <laughs> That's cool. Yep. No, uh, yeah. I think for me, I think it goes back to that, like Kelly Jones, Batman. And when I got into comics, it was that, and he was uh, Romita Jr. doing, I think it was the end of the Clone War uh, for Spider-Man or something like that. The Clone oh, okay. Saga. Uh, not a Clone War. Clone Wars is the Star Wars. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the yeah. Clone Saga, I think it was, yeah, right? Saga. Yeah, yeah. With... Uh, but yeah, so like, it was that, just because it was, it was a translation, kind of like Morgan. It was a translation of what I was watching on TV and then suddenly having, you know, actual books that I could touch and go over as mm -hmm. many times. And, I think what was more important, not more important, what what, what definitely like got me more into comics as I kept going, yeah, uh, was that uh, obviously as a kid, animation was not something I could reproduce. Uh, but then a comic book, I could oh, I could see that drawing Same. and I can yeah. reproduce that drawing and I can learn how to draw like straight from that. And then I like the final product was kind of like more accessible in my head. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, as, as I became more obsessed with comics, then I just loved the, the storytelling part of, yeah. of comic books and kind of like the format and what you can do with comics. Yeah, um, I agree with Hori that I feel like that was a big part of it, was realizing as you were reading these things that you were like, oh, I could do this. Like, versus, you're right, like an animated TV show you watch, and you're like, I have no idea how this works. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can draw a character, but I don't know how to, you know, make the story this yeah. way. Make, but seeing it, make comic, it move. You're like, oh, yeah. I get it. Like, I can now, yeah tell whatever I want or do anything yeah. like that. That also was a big changing factor for me. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the nice thing about like the, the comic book world is it's a, it's a format that's just so versatile. Yes. Is, do you feel that there's uh, some, some things in terms of storytelling that it does better than other mediums? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a there's a lot that you can. So I love. I also love reading, like you know, books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So like comics was the perfect combination of that. Of like you can go. Uh, you can go with prose whenever you want to, but you also have the visual. Like the only thing I would. One day we need to get there is just having music, like a soundtrack. Oh, no, no, nice. Comics. You think that's good, but once you I know, but that, every time that you see a digital crap. comic with like a soundtrack, it's it's <laughs> you want to so pull your ears out. But <laughs> but I feel like that's the only thing that I would miss, like mood wise. That you know, like an like an animated movie or like a like like TV show mm -hmm. or whatever, t like gets to you through that soundtrack, through that music that mm -hmm. sets you in the mood. That's the only thing I would miss. <laughs> like in a comic book format. Other than that, I think you can do so many things. Like the way, like you can go super traditional with just like a nine uh, panel grid, and it's just like very beat by beat kind of like storytelling. Yeah. But then you can go, you know, you can do Sandman and do like more complicated, yeah, in, like in more bold, esoteric uh, layouts that it like tell the story in a very different way. Yeah, I think comics a, I think can achieve a lot of you know that that magical you know, fantastical imagery or movie or whatever without having to have, again, that, like, super high budget yeah, that, sure. that animation or television or whatever has to have. I also think that comics kind of can, can tell different stories better because you're not limited by what you can physically view on the screen, right? Like, you can set up your panels, like, with what's happening, cont you know, continuity-wise in the story, mm -hmm. but you can also throw yeah. in elements, you know, for mood or yeah. for suspense or for whatever that are kind of images that don't necessarily have to be the thing you're seeing in sequence like you would have to do with a camera. Yeah. Yeah. So you get to kind of guide the reader a little bit more than you do with a prose. It's not just up the reader to imagine, right? Yeah. Um, but you still, I feel like especially for mood and kind of building that, I feel like comics has an edge over a lot of other media um, because you really can think about how imagery, you know, invokes feelings or invokes reactions without, again, it being like this room and this setup and these characters. Oh, that's wonderful. The uh, um, yeah, there's there's a number of ways that you can uh, certainly emphasize, you know, things. Uh, these days, I'm I'm kind of thinking of like, uh, you know, pop up books where you can like fold things out and. You know, really, you know, things will stand up. You know, where you where you want to kind of, you know, re, uh, you know, I, I know you guys are a few years younger than than me, but like back in the '90s when I was in high school and, and going into art school, um, you know, you had you started having these massive foldouts and all these ridiculous, um, you know, kind of gimmicky things. But yeah. you know, if used right, you know, they could also really emphasize different elements of the of the story. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of comics, especially you see it with more, you know, graphic novels and European comics and like wherever the budget allows it. But like when you start introducing right. uh, see-through pages yeah, or like cutouts or yeah, mm, exactly. yeah. yeah, you can tell stories in so many different ways. What what's the one that we just got recently? Oh, with the two kids. The... I can't um, really. It's, it's a European. That one's, that it's a one's European... Actually, yeah, but I think it's a Spanish comic. This is, yeah, like the original language was in, or maybe it was in French. I can't remember. But it's essentially like this story of. Uh, boyhood, you're following this man as he's kind of reflecting um, on his his boyhood past. It's not in English, so I'm not 100% sure of the story, but um, and so, A, they do that really well with colors, but when they're kind of transitioning back and forth, they do those, like, kind of clear mm. or not clear, but like that, almost like a tissue paper overlay. Yeah, oh, okay. You see the image pass to the image, and then as you turn the page, you, like, step back into time, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Nice. Stuff like that more. <laughs> yeah, kind of like using a vellum or something like that. Exactly like a vellum. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's fantastic. Hey, uh, anybody that's out there watching us right now, feel free to to ask a question. Um, I'm here with uh, Morgan Beam and uh, Jorge Corona. Corona, are you drinking a Corona? Is that what I've got seeing offside? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> In Corona, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, you taste good. <laughs> Listen. If I'm gonna, yeah, if I'm gonna be afraid with, of anything that, with, that has the name Corona, that's gonna be a lot of, a lot of self hating. So might as well just enjoy the beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. You got you got that one thing floating around. <laughs> Wait, when this whole thing was breaking, just barely Jorge started. Just got texts from everybody that was like, "Huh, huh coronavirus." Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> can't remember. I just, it was it was very early on, so I wasn't being a complete dick. 
<laughs> it's like there was no cases here. Like we just were, you know, hearing you about. Just it. hearing about it from China. Yeah, China. you were hearing about it from China by that point. But then I went to the studio uh, to pick up something, and no one was there. So I sent all of my studio mates pictures of me touching their screens. Oh jeez. Like, yeah, exactly. Which is terrible right now. Terrible. Right, that is really bad. You get charged with terrorism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like, well, that's a funny joke, and then it like became the guy, a nightmare. The guy who, like, yeah, off. yeah. Make sure to delete those photos as quickly yeah, exactly. as possible. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, oh, she, well, online. it's not my. It's not great. I, I'm sure one day we'll we'll get the the Guinness, you know, 26, you know, virus, and the and the, oh, the God, Heineken, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. 78 <laughs> virus or something like that. You know, then then you could just say, ha ha, fuck you, Scottish people, you know, oh, no, yeah. to my Scottish friends. When it's the Budweiser virus. So like that's Oh, virus. yeah. Well, I think Budweiser is a virus, isn't it? <laughs> that's my point. Unto itself. I mean, you know, that's just kind of piss water. Then that's that's yeah. just going to be the end times, probably. Bud Vin 25. Yeah, Bud Light, Bud Light 19. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. The thing that's going to get me really bad is if, if there's like a, a Sumatra, because I'm a coffee guy, like a Sumatra you know, virus, then I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm screwed. Uh, you know, caffeine's my only vice, you know. That and Pornhub, I should say. Anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> Listen, this is where we come out with everything. Yeah, it's, yeah, we're, we're all stuck at home. Let's just, you know, em empty the, the, the dirty laundry, I suppose. Oh, man. It's really not that dirty and it's not that deep. You're at home, you should be able to wash it. Because <laughs> you got nothing better to do. Oh man, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's it, yeah. All you can do is watch Gremlins Two, House Sitter, yeah, all at the same time because you got all these screens, and then do your laundry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So while, while you guys have been at home, uh, has there been anything that you've been able to indulge in or find uh, you know new content that you're really enjoying? Well, I actually. Uh, so I, I've always been like a more physical kind of comic book reader, but like during the quarantine, I've been getting into comiXology. So like oh, I've been cool. getting like we got comiXology Unlimited, and I've been getting like a bunch of stuff through that. Yeah. So it's been nice to kind of like oh yeah, there is another also like another way that I can get like comics and like on a it's more been immediate nice too. base. I do feel like especially during our busy times, kind of unfortunately. You, you, your time gets so eaten up by making comics, right? And then right. you think about story yeah. all day that a lot of times when you come home, you're just, like, kind of brain dead. Yeah. So I feel like during those times, I unfortunately, like, don't read that many comics. Um, you know, oh, then you wonder kind that. of why you have this sort of, like, creative slump and yeah. because there's, like, no fuel left in the tank. So yeah. it has been really nice in this period. I feel like we've gotten to go back and reread a lot of the books we've had. Yeah. Um, looking at a lot of the old art books I have. And then, yeah, a lot of the new stuff on comicsology and just to feel like kind of a a surge of inspiration again. And same thing, you know, just kind of being able to deep dive, you know, I've been able to do some like master studies on artists I like and oh, cool. just like yeah. that. Yeah. That that's pretty cool. What what uh what kind of uh like master classes are you looking into? Oh, not necessarily classes, but more just like I'll I'll just take like an image. Um like I've been looking at a lot of there's just so many great people who use watercolor on Instagram. It mm -hmm. just blows my mind. Oh yeah. Most, like the little time lapse videos. Um and so a lot of times I'll watch them and try to figure out, you know, like watch the video, look at the image and see if I can recreate it with the stuff they have. Wow. And then that way it helps me like learn new techniques or, or how yeah. to use, you know, certain colors better. Um, like there's a Instagram artist, uh, her handle is Hey, hey Kala. Hey Kala, that's what yeah. I say. Um, and she works a lot with like acrylic ink as opposed to just watercolor, um, oh, which is cool. something I really considered. So I, I got a little, she had like a little, um, toolkit that she sold so I, I got some of that and I've been playing around with the inks um and yeah just kind of doing stuff for fun again nice. yeah. <laughs> you know it's like I I we love our jobs um and so that's a good transition right because I love the work I do and I'm, I feel really uh fortunate that I, I get to do that work but because it kind of transitioned to work I stopped doing art for a while kind of just mm -hmm. for me yeah, for yeah. Like, or just, just for the fun of it and I feel like that's something I'm trying to get back into yeah which is a hard thing for me my my brain works more in like I need to have a project that I can work on and like when it's something like it's up in the air it takes me a while to kind of concentrate or mm -hmm. just like sit down and do it so I've been mostly like I've been mostly just reading I've been mostly uh trying to come up with story ideas because it's been so long since I actually uh wrote oh, you know, cool. uh, uh new ideas and stuff like that 
and I have a couple of things coming up, but nothing is set on stone yet. So like, it's been good to have this time to kind of branch out and do more more of the stuff that I start that I did a long time ago when we were still in in college when we were still at SCAD and so, because we were kind of like taking charge of the whole project and now uh, I'm just writing for myself to see if something comes up that I can I can uh, you know dedicate myself later on but this is a good time to do it uh, yeah we, I'd say the only hard thing is that like the inspiration level is up which is really exciting but the motivation level Super down. Sure. Sure. <laughs> we yeah. got really spoiled about having an outside of the house workspace. I feel like. Yeah. I feel like that's part of it, and also just sort of the weirdness of the times. I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like I get really jazzed to work on certain stuff and feel really inspired. But then the actual sitting down and making myself do it. A yeah. Harder. Yeah. <laughs> I think the fact that yeah, the fact that we have to kind of like, you know, very promptly bring all the stuff from the studio to our to our apartment, and then it still feels a little bit kind of like temporary like it's it's not permanent temporary, yeah, yeah well, it's temporary. Temporary. We can't last long. i mean yeah no for sure but my point <laughs> is like that that's that's what makes it hard to kind of like sit yeah. down because everything is like i don't feel comfortable this is not like a proper setup right now yeah which is very very spoiled from <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Uh, there's there's been a, a couple times where you know I, I I don't feel comfortable in a certain area. I can't can't get into that mindset to sit down and draw or write or whatever. And then like these days, it's just like yeah, wherever I can yeah. You know, as as time progresses, especially during the quarantine, it's like yeah, yeah where, wherever I I sit, you know, it's it's fine. I just don't even have to wear pants, so that's good. <laughs> you know, everything's nice. You know. Poor Elise will walk in. It's like, oh my god, how long have you been in the bathroom? And it's like, well, this is the bathroom. I thought this was my new office. I mean, the Wi-Fi is amazing in here. <laughs> what are the lights so good? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If if and if I want a sauna, I just turn on the shower and it gets steamed, and it's great. There you go. <laughs> it's your own luxury hotel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the bidet. It's called a sink, honey. It's a fountain. It's a fountain. <laughs> Well, the, yeah, the way I've got it engineered, it's a fountain. <laughs> I'm the Bellagio now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 sometimes you just got to make up your own situation, live in your own head, and, uh, you yeah. know, interesting things uh, come out of that, so, you know, sometimes. Um, yeah. You were talking about, uh, you know, kind of writing for yourself. Uh, do you ever see, uh, you know, kind of making that, uh, you know, that transition, uh either back and forth between writer and an artist or, you know, is that something you want to segue into just like do it, doing right writing predominantly or, um, yeah, well, I don't know. Like I've never, uh, I've well, never started out. No. Yeah. I've never written for anyone else. My, I started out, uh, right after we came out of college, I had those crazy times. I had like three projects at the same time because mm. I was hungry. Uh, so yeah. I'm never doing that again. Uh, but uh, I'm also old now. But yeah, so I was working on I was working on a creator owned project uh, that I was writing and drawing, and I was working on a creator owned project that I was just doing the art for. Um, and then I had another job that was paying the bills. So like it was, it was a lot of hire. different yeah work for hire stuff. Um, so I since that first book that was like a six issue. Uh, mini series. Uh, I haven't done anything large format that I'm writing to. Most mm. of the stuff that I've been doing, I've been mostly doing the art part or the co-creator part or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I've been I've been wanting to to go back to writing a little bit more for myself. I had opportunities with shorter stories, like five pages, ten pages, stuff like that. That is always fun. Yeah, but uh, I kind of I kind of feel like I need to prove to myself that I can still do the larger format stuff because I haven't done it in so long that it feels a little bit rusty right now. So that's mostly what I, why I've been uh, trying to also write uh, and come up with ideas on my own just because, like I said, like it feels like it's been so long that I don't know if I still have it that I kind of want to prove to myself that I can. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see. Again, this this is mostly has mostly been for that. I do want to go back at one point to do my own creator own projects that I I do the the whole thing. But I I also do enjoy the collaboration aspect of comics. I do yeah. enjoy when I have a writer um, that I can work with and especially when we are involved from the get go in kind of like the conception of the idea and all of that and then I ha I can have input into kind of work where the story could go or, or how to shape the story. 
Um, I do like that process a lot. I'm not... I'm not like a control freak that I need everything yeah. to fall on me to feel okay with my work. I actually like that collaboration aspect. So uh, I think in the future, that's most likely what it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of like, you know, some projects I do myself, some projects I work with people. Like I yeah. think I like that jumping back and forward from between the two. Yeah. Could you ever want to write for someone else? I don't know. Mm. I, yeah, the, way that, the way that I write is weird because I write very much for myself. I do, I do break that. I do like I have the story. I do the breakdown of the story, and then I do thumbnails from that because I, I visually see it better once I have like layouts of the pages, and yeah. I usually script over those layouts. Yeah. So, like if I'm working with an artist, I would have to go straight to scripting, which I don't know. I kind of like seeing the page because then I know where I can cut some of the dialogue and some of the narration because I know what's going to be there visually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's probably going to be an experiment that I'll have to do yeah. at one point, just writing for someone else and I see how that I, feels. Yeah, I feel like I'd, I'd like to get more into like doing the whole thing, like writing and drawing a book. I think it'd be really fun. But mm -hmm. I also enjoy the co-creator aspect and kind of hot minds coming together. Yeah. I don't think I'd like to... I think I'd like to write and draw my own thing. I'm not sure I'd like to write for somebody. Yeah, that kind of sounds... Stressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it it's interesting because I've you know, I've written a, a number of scripts for other artists and um you know you know I myself am, have a different visual vocabulary than, than they do because yeah. I'm O C D with line work and um you know they're they're you know, everybody's got all these different fantastic styles. So uh I usually just give them, you know, just the the basics. This is what's happening in the stu in the the scene. This is these are the details. Here's the dialogue. Do you know? Surprise me. You know. Yeah. And yeah, if if uh, if there's a you know an issue or something, then pull in the reins. I, I usually don't have to, but um, but it's usually with people I I know and have a mild yeah. shorthand. That's the key to like I think a, a successful collaboration, though, right? Is you you yeah. have to trust your partner essentially yeah. like you hired them for a reason for the expertise yeah. that you have and i feel like the you know the the collaborations that i've been the most frustrated with is generally when i'm working with somebody who's got the reins a little too tight where it's yeah. like you know they had a vision and yeah. they just want it to be their vision yeah and it's like, i'll do that especially you know if it's my my job if it's for a paycheck but it, it kind of robs the joy of it a little bit it feels less like a collaboration but um, yeah, for the most part, I feel like the most successful writers I've worked with are the ones that kind of trust me to do a thing. And just like you're saying, like if something's not clear or I missed yeah. a point of something, then, you know, we can talk, but yeah, yeah, most definitely the, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's nice when you, when you develop that, uh, collaboration and there's that shorthand and, and, uh, you know, that, that trust fall is basically like the entirety of that project. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and you feel comfortable and. Uh, I, I think the biggest joy or the biggest thing too is to make sure there's, there's, you know, the project's fun and, and to make it yeah. pretty joyful. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to inject a lot of humor and comedy and, uh, make it weird and absurd. So, yeah. so, you know, if, if I'm working with another artist, you know, they're having fun doing crazy visuals that only yeah. they, they can, you know, come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, you you guys mentioned early that uh, you you do some collaboration uh, between the two of you, um, and you know Jorge with with how you uh, you know talked about you know writing you know breaking things down into you know some visuals and stuff. Uh, I would say you're you're perfect uh, you know collaboration partner sitting right next to you because uh, she has to put up with you anyway. So yeah, yeah. You know, yeah I guess I guess she's okay with me. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, that's, that's been actually one of the things that we've talked about during this whole time is just uh, coming up with that kind of like and how would that process would look like and how mm -hmm. would we divide. Because again, like Morgan said, we when it comes, I don't I don't worry too much about like the story as like the story or scripting part of it is more when we get into the art part because we both have so strong opinions and strong directions into how to take uh, art. Uh, which we usually can blend together pretty well, but it's that part of like. But when we don't. <laughs> but when we don't, then. You know. uh, so I'm not. Yeah. So we were we were talking about it, and we were thinking of like what would 
what would that collaborative process would look like for us? And yeah. I think, uh, we, yeah, we came up with like, it'll probably be something we'll definitely try out in the future. Yeah. Just because we want to do it. And it, and, and it seems like, I mean, and we have fun when, when, when we do work together, we do have fun. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just trying to figure well, out where, least, when like, no one is stepping on yeah. the other person's toes too much. Like, the beginning stages are fine. Like, we spitball story ideas to each other all the time. Yeah. We help each other. We critique each other. Um, but, yeah, it's it, we, we just have some, some different approaches to the art sometimes. Yeah. yeah. That, that becomes, like, well, whose ideas? Especially because, like, my mind is more mechanic and kind of, like, you know, step by step. And Morgan is loose and <laughs> traditional and i'm like digital like and precise and yeah. yeah exactly so like every time that we work together on something i'm like but can you do it in a different layer so i can do it like nope, i can cannot. edit something and morgan is like no i like it better when it's all in one page and i'm Hello. like you're killing me There's nothing i can do after that oh poor jorge uh, it, your your mind sounds like it needs more oil oh god yeah oh god it's it's way too square sometimes <laughs> my favorite is sometimes at the studio he'd come up behind me and he'd stand like this and he'd go so is that um i don't know in type format whatever insert like so is uh is that the layout you're gonna go for is that a uh, is that the type you're gonna oh use? Out and i'm like i will kill you <laughs> yeah jorge you're sleeping on the couch Listen, I know That's my like, fault. Get out. I know, and Morgan sometimes does things just to. Yeah, so sometimes I'll know, like if it's not a hundred percent centered, or like something's not, because he just has such a, a great, which is really good for a story time, but like strong design mind or whatever. I'll just like adjust it just a little bit, or do something just, <laughs> yeah. just to drive me insane. And it's just like, oh my god. It's like, yeah. Who was and then the, it just haunts him what was the last oh, one. Oh, I think it was, you, you were drawing like the panel border and it was like heart angle, heart angle, oh, yeah. round, heart angle. And I was like, I knew why I was is drawing that the thing and I was like, oh, if I curve just one of the corners, it's going to kill him. <laughs> That's great. Just the, the slightest little thing that only he would get. Oh my God. That's, that's fantastic. Oh, it's killing me on the Somewhere out there that's being printed and I'm dying inside. Oh, man. <laughs> yep, yep. So I know. I know I'm the problem child in this, in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> so that would just be interesting. And then I, I don't know. I have... Uh, feels the American in me. Um, I don't like to be told what to do a lot. So I think that could be hard in our collaboration, especially because we're so emotionally close that it's easy just like, right? In a professional setting, you have to like rein it in. Right. Um, and it's easier to work with somebody you don't know and be like, oh, okay, that's just feedback. It's just business, whatever. You can let yeah. it go. My personal life, I don't like to be told what to do very much. And so I just feel like that is going to become an issue <laughs> in <a> collaboration. <laughs> but that's my personal issue that I will work on, so... <laughs> He's nice. going to be like, hey, can you adjust it more like this? And I'm just going to do the total opposite because I suck and I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst. Looks, looks like uh, Wayne uh, wins it uh, from uh, Time Warp chimed in. For some reason, his, his comment's not, not popping up in the feed. So let me see if I can go to the Facebook page. Come on, old phone. <laughs> Hang tight. Oh, there we go. Come on, pop up here. Oh, uh, Wayne just says, fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> miss you, Wayne. Yeah, I miss you. Hope you're doing okay. Yeah, I th and I think yeah, he's, yeah, for uh, for those cop comic book shop owners, you know, if, if you can support your local comic book shop, I mean, that is really, that's those brick and mortar stores that are really having a hard time keeping keeping the roof over yeah. their head. So if yeah, you can go and support them. Yeah, we've, we've picked out some pages where we're donating uh, to Wayne. Which oh. To go to, our, to, our go to the post postal office, office closed, to send, so. yeah. But yeah. Fantastic. Excursions yeah. have been limited. Yeah, yeah, all the shops here in, in Colorado have been really good to us over yeah. the years. Yeah, so and we've been trying to reach out to figure out just ways that we can help, especially, yeah. 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 You know, but, yeah. Yeah, and I think... But, I think he's been doing uh, like some uh, some auctions too online, so um, I'll, I'll try and make sure to, to repost that when it comes up again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I think that's yeah that's part of kind of like what we were talking about, like how that this situation has forced people to figure out 
new ways and different ways to promote more of the the, the selling points of a comic book shop and stuff like that and comics in general. Yeah. And you know, it's again, it's going to be hard and it's going to be difficult, but I, it's it's good to see that creatives and stores and you know a lot of people are just coming together to figure out what yeah. things are gonna what things work out and what don't i think that's one of like the beautiful things about comics for the most part as an industry is that like it's it's a very supportive industry right like it's not cutthroat it's not a race to the top or tearing each other down for opportunities yeah, yeah. you know i i've been so pleased that over the years at conventions and stuff you know as i'm trying to establish my career it seems like everybody i meet who's on their way up is trying to pull somebody up with them yeah yeah. Everybody's really excited about everybody else's stories, you know, and it's less like, oh, this person's my competition and more like, oh, no, that idea sounds really dope. I'd love to read that. Yeah. Um, and the same way that, you know, stores are always so supportive of creators, you know, trying to get local creators into signings and, and promote their books and whatever. And it's been nice to see, you know, virtually creators doing what they can, you know, to try and help stores, donate pages. They did that whole um uh, creators Before, for comics yeah. auction, auction on Twitter, yeah. and it was really cool to see a bunch of creators. You know, half of whom I know, like I know, who are like out of work and feeling, I think, insecure about money, but but you know, doing these auctions still coming to in, still yeah. try to support the stores and stuff. And so that's one of the things that I I love about the industry on a whole. I think it's just very supportive and very loving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wayne followed up. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, yep, uh, they're they're going to be live streaming sales. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We got to find some shipping supplies, yeah. um, and then we'll send those off. We're not prepared, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and and I think uh, like uh, office depots and some of those uh, places are still uh, like essential uh, businesses that are still open. Oh, okay, are they? Cool. Yeah, so you can just go to their website, uh, order them for like curbside. Uh, for oh, some reason, okay. I think Best Buy is too because they also have a, a lot of those uh, office items. Oh, okay, um, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll have to yeah I guess job. in my mind it was just like all retail. I guess yeah, I, don't know. Yeah. I haven't checked anything, but yeah, yeah. Um, so we're we're just about ready to to start winding down. Um, you know, with uh, you know, hopefully with you know Colorado just slightly starting to open up ever so cautiously. Yeah. Um, you know, what are the things that uh, you're looking for to to do when you're able to actually reconnect with people? Oh, and realistically, probably a year from now, despite yeah. whatever anybody's timeline right. is. Yeah, there's going to be some adjustment. Unfor unfortunately, I think this that will be a little last bit longer, longer yeah. than anybody thinks. I don't know. I Part of me just looks forward to at some point getting back to like a real schedule, you know, <laughs> like I go to work and days mean something. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we have weekends. Part of it I know is that we just... You know, we've, we've been doing what we can to, you know, do groceries or, or help out our families who live here. Um, but, you know, them being a little bit older and a little bit more at risk, it's been hard to just not see them. Yeah, just yeah. Kind of like yeah. Keeping, keeping that gap that, like, you know, we, we're not going into their houses and we're trying to, like, if, whenever we go to drop something, it's like we're dropping on the porch or yeah. dropping or whatever. And then, yeah. you know, like that distance. Yeah. So whenever we can... People. Actually, Resume hugging yeah, people, hugging strangers people. on the street. Um, really looking forward to like sitting on a beer or a rooftop, oh, or God. sitting on a patio or a rooftop and having a beer. And <laughs> yeah. like a, you but, know, just being like outside amongst humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. And and uh, you know this, uh, you know, because of this, you had to miss that that fa wonderful trip for your anniversary. So hopefully, you can actually partake in that. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we we can do that. And then yeah, there's been. I mean, a couple of like shows that we wanted that we were either participating or going to that you know got canceled with all this. You know, yeah, it's always a bummer because you know conventions kind of where you get to see your 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 comic friends. friends and, yeah, exactly. yeah. So it'd be like, well, next year, but but yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think yeah, just just um, we're still you know in that contact. social aspect. Yeah, yeah. like going out and having a, a meal. You know, and, yeah, like, going out to have. Food yeah. with friends somewhere. Like, like yeah. you, you forget how much that kind of stuff, that just like going out stuff, took up a lot of your time. Right, right. Because now, like sometimes you wind down in the evenings or whatever, it's like, well, what are we doing now? <laughs> it's like, well, I guess we'll watch a movie again. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's hard for us because before, like, we were, again, really fortunate to be so busy with work that we didn't really have like a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or like, so then especially when we had kind of planned this three weeks because we were going to be traveling to not have any work, we were ecstatic that, you know, we, we could plan it to not have any work. We got here and it was sort of just like, 
Now we have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had to invent projects. Yeah. Yep. Well, it'll be exciting to see, you know, what what kind of things actually, you know, kind of roll out of that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, when, when we're able to come out of that or when you're able to, to share that. Um, where's a, a good place that uh, people can come and, and uh, find you and find your work? Uh, my, so on both, I think the only two social medias I have anymore are both, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Instagram, I feel like I upload the most art to, and it's just my full name, Morgan Beam, for a handle for everything. Um, or I have a website that's just morganbeamart.com. Yeah, and that would be, yeah, it would be Instagram, uh, would be mine too, where I post most of the stuff, and that's Jorge underscore C-O-R. Um, and you can find me there, and then, yeah, I, I try to post much as I can just like process stuff and, and, and projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, and yeah, that's a good place to kind of stay in, in, in touch. Uh, Twitter I use, but not as much. I just reblog everything that I put yeah, on Instagram. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a good place. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully things will resume and we can, we can keep putting stuff out there. I think I miss, yeah. I miss that aspect. <laughs> yeah. Have, yeah. It'll be what it'll be, but I think if everybody can just keep moving forward and being kind to each other, oh, yeah. It'll be all right. yeah, yeah, here, here, uh, I that's that's a wonderful sentiment. To, I think to, to end things on, yeah. All right, Daniel. Well, thank you so much yeah, for having for, us. For yeah, having thank you. Good. I'm gonna yeah. close out uh, this live feed and, and feel free to stay on uh, on Skype here. Sounds good. All right. Thanks all right, again. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks again to everybody that uh, was able to uh, watch us live on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.